Street. Welcome to the last week of June. Um, we have our live schedule for this week. Today's class is at 9.30 in the morning. Um, we have two classes to, tomorrow on Tuesday, 1 p.m. and 5.45. The 1 p.m. is, um, is an express class. Wednesday, Canada Day, we will be running a 9.30 class. Start your day with us um, to get a workout in. Um, and then let's enjoy maybe some festivities for Anna's birthday. Last workout is Friday at 11.45 in the morning. Okay, so we only have 1 p.m. class on Tuesday because the Wednesday shifted over into the morning class. Um, so come join us on one of those classes. The Zoom ID and password are now being posted on the workout. So um, you can take the, the ID and uh, password from there. You don't have to worry about waiting for an email anymore. So take that password, take that ID, and join us on one of the classes. And I'm gonna pass it over to Yash for the workout today. All right, guys, so we got three mini workouts here, uh, six minutes each, um, five rounds of uh, a couplet on each workout there. So zero to six minutes there, we're doing five rounds, nine pull-ups, nine front squats. Then we're gonna rest two minutes, then we're gonna go into five rounds of nine dips and nine paint power cleans. Rest two minutes and then go nine sumo deadlifts and nine and nine pieces. Um, each time interval, so you're trying to finish all five rounds within those six minutes each time. If you don't finish, make sure you just rest right at that uh, time stamp. So let's say if you don't finish the round or all five rounds within six minutes, just stop at six, rest two minutes, and then you can move on to the next workout after that. But try your best. See if you can get all five rounds done. It is at a higher intensity there, but it is doable to get all of it done within that since it's nine and nine reps, in short uh, rep scheme or low volume each round, and five rounds not too much to get done there, so 45 reps each. Um, for the weights here, guys, um, choose weights and regressions there where you can try to keep them unbroken as best as possible. Maybe around the fourth or fifth, you might have to break it a little bit, but try to keep it unbroken as best as possible to be able to finish within the six minutes each time. All right, so high intensity, and then we're going into a rest after each workout there. I'm gonna pass it over to Eddie for the afterburner. That's a spicy workout, looks real fun. Um, have fun with that. Um, use that afterburner today as a cool down. Stretch out those glutes two minutes, um, either the side or as a uh, one stretch. You'll see the recommendations that we give you guys later on in the afterburner uh, segment. See you next for the warm up. Okay guys, for our warm up today, we are starting off with some uh, alternating dead bug leg and arm raises. So we're doing this for a minute and we're gonna do two rounds of this. So we're gonna start off on our backs here in that dead bug. So head and neck relax, arms are gonna be up in the air. And then I'm gonna bring my feet up. I'm gonna try to keep my legs straight if I can, arms straight. And then I'm going to alternate as my right leg goes down, my left arm goes overhead. Never go too low where you start to over arch that back. You want that low back pressed into the floor the whole time. So we're again just switching from one side to the other. Notice how I'm doing this slow in control. I always find controlling this movement to be more beneficial, especially since we're just warming up that core. We're going to do that for a minute, take a little break, and then you're gonna go for another minute. After you've done that, you're gonna go for three rounds, starting off with some bent over rows. There is a little adjustment than the normal bent over row because we're doing this from the deadlift position. So normally when we do bent over rows, we would have our object and we keep our legs relatively straight, maybe not fully locked out, but we keep our mouth relatively straight. From here, we actually wanna be in the deadlift position. So my shoulders are going to be just a little bit ahead of the object. My shins are going to be straight in the air. And of course, my back is going to be flat. Notice how my head and neck is neutral, so I'm not looking straight. I'm looking in a neutral position, lengthening the top of my head, the crown of my head all the way down to the bottom of my spine. And I'm just going to then squeeze those shoulder blades, pull my object in, and then back down. We're going for a set of 10 of those. Of course, I'm keeping my elbows tucked in tight to my body and I'm trying to engage those upper back muscles at the top by squeezing them together. 
Once we're done that, we're going to go for eight tempo deadlifts. So for our tempo today, we don't actually have a time that we want you counting it out. We just want you guys going slow on the way down. So we're getting to that bottom of that deadlift position. Head in night neutral, push with the heels, open the hip. We're going to squeeze that butt, bring the knees down. And then on the way down, nice and slow, we're going to hinge at that hip, pushing it back. When your hands get about to knee position, we're going to lower the rest of that movement with the legs. So remember, we're not just lifting with the legs, but we're lowering with the legs. You can stand up at a normal speed, go a little quicker on the way down. We're really slowing it down. Once you're done eight of those, you're going to go for six hang muscle cleans per arm. So in the hang muscle clean, we're going to start off by standing with our dumbbell. We're going to push that hip back just like we did in a deadlift, but this time I am looking straight. My back and chest is a little bit taller. I'm going to think of squeezing my butt, driving my elbow up, and then catching my dumbbell on the shoulder. So again, hips go back, push my elbow up, catch it on the shoulder. Notice I'm not catching it in a dip position for now. We're just warming up with the muscle clean. You can do all six on one side, or you can alternate if you like. We're doing three rounds of that. We'll see you for the workout next. All right, so we're here for the workout movements, guys. Uh, remember, there's three workouts, and each workout has a couple or two movements. We're gonna start off with that first couplet, nine pull-ups, and then nine front squats. So for the pull-ups, guys, you can, um, Use a bent over row option. So I'm going to use a dumbbell today to show you guys that bent over option. You can go for nine to nine rows per side, or if you have a single object, you can just go for nine rows all together. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys the row option, but the same principles apply for your pull up. If you want to use a pull up variation as well, as prescribed, you can. So for the bent over row, guys, we're just bending over at the hips, bringing that weight to about that knee height where. Um, my back is almost parallel to the floor, and I'm going to pull that elbow in, keep the shoulder back as I pull that elbow in, and I'm going to squeeze that lat and mid back as I do that row. So you guys can go from that bent over position, or you can go into a staggered position as well, just as long as that back is flat and you're pulling your elbow into that mid back. Once you do those nine pull ups, um, whether it's from a bar, a towel, or if you're doing rows, you go to those front squats. So for those front squats, guys, we're going to keep that weight on that front rack position. So we're going to really pull our elbows up, flare those lats out so we can stay nice and tight here. Make sure you're in your squatting stance. Again, you can go single arm there, or you can go with that one object right in the middle. We're going to come all the way down, keeping those knees out, chest nice and tall, make sure that weight is distributed evenly amongst the full foot, and then drive straight up. As we stand up, think about driving up with those elbows as you come out of the bottom of the squat. So, five rounds of that guys, nine and nine pull-ups and front squats. Next couplet, we're gonna go into those nine dips and nine hang power cleans. So for those dips guys, as mentioned before, you can use two objects that are a little bit elevated off the floor. Make sure there's some space in between so that you can do your dip in. So I'm going to use these parallels here. I'm going to first get my legs straight out, arms nice and locked out. Then I'm going to bend up the elbows, kind of like that pull up, coming as low as I can, maintaining that tension in my back, and then driving straight up so that my elbows lock out. Again, watch that your elbows don't flare up here. Keep them tight to your body the entire time, whether you're going from that knee bent position or leg straight. Nine reps there, guys. Then we're going into those nine hang power cleans. So, again, you guys can use that same weight. If you're going single line, let's go nine per side. Um, or if you have a barbell, just go nine total as prescribed. For those hang power cleans, guys, we're going to bend over at the hips kind of like that bent over roll position. From here we're going to drive through the legs nice and hard. As we drive through the legs nice and hard, pull through the elbow, we're going to land in that front rack position. So that front rack position, elbows tall, hips are back, then we're going to stand it up from there before we start our next rep. So, nice 
hard drive, elbow through, hips back, and then stand it up. Make sure, guys, it's common. We're going to be kind of wanting to let our knees kind of go forward and catch with those femurs. We want to push the hips back as we catch it. So nine reps there, guys. Once you're done those nine reps, you repeat that round. Again, five rounds, nine dips, nine plank power rounds. Last couplet here, we got small deadlifts and knee sits here. So sumo deadlifts, you guys can use the same weight. Um, wider stance than usual for that width. Toes slightly flared out. Think about pushing that floor away, so kind of separating that floor with your feet. And then as you're picking up that object, remember back to the flat. Push hard through those legs as you stand up and as you control the weight down. We're trying to really emphasize that glute drive as you're doing that nine uh, sumo deadlift. So make sure you're thinking about pushing the floor away from each other as you're doing those reps. Once you're done those deadlifts, guys, last moment here, nine and nine knee sits, so a little bit different here. Um, you can also substitute this for a jackknife, but uh, same kind of principles apply here. For that knee sit, we're gonna keep ourselves in that hollow position. We're gonna go for nine knee sits with just lifting one leg up, so nine reps here, guys. Once we're done nine reps there, we're gonna go nine reps on the opposite side. Now if you can do these sits, you can also go for jack nines. Once you finish nine on one side, you go nine on the opposite. So, quite a workout there guys. Um, make sure you have all your progression set up and then write down your timestamp so you know when to stop uh, or start and go there. Um, hope you guys enjoy it. We'll see you guys next for the afternoon. Okay, let's cool off here again with some stretching, a two minute stretch of the saddle stretch. Feel free to use an object to support you. It could be yoga blocks. I got my friend Wilson here. Um, so I'm gonna use that to demonstrate the progression. But if you don't need that, you don't have to use it. Well, saddle stretch here again. You wanna start by first, you're upright, squeeze your butt. Notice, I don't know if you guys can see it, notice my hip, I have that tilt of my hip. I want to tuck my pelvis in before I sit down to make sure that my hip's in a better position. From there, always double check. Can you squeeze the glute? Do you need to shuffle around? Kind of reset your hip and pelvis position. If that feels good, now you can start working your way down. The intent in area focus here is to not just stretch your quads, get a little bit of hip flexor. I know for myself, if I'm not feeling too tight in that area, I actually start getting my groin a little bit as well, just because I'm squeezing my glutes the entire time. So squeeze your butt as you go down. Now, you can use that object behind you to support. Notice the difference. I'm not activating my glutes, I'm activating my glutes. That's gonna protect your low back, so squeeze your bum, keep your core tight. If this feels okay and you're looking to progress it a little further, drop down to the elbows. Okay, again, anytime you drop down in progression, you're squeezing your glutes. If that feels fine, take it to the floor, guys. Squeeze your bum, keep your core slightly active. We'll hang out there for two minutes, find that progression. Maybe you're progressing within the two minutes. When you come back up, guys, Use those arms so it doesn't hurt your back guys and prop yourself back up. Okay, two minutes. When you find that stretch that you like, start repeating it a little bit more throughout the week guys. We'll see you tomorrow.